All right, I'm going to change gears on this new segment I am doing. Uh, I did an episode yesterday. Uh, I talked about Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Here's here's that. Uh, I'm going to change this graphic. So this will be probably the last time you see this graphic. You get a day or so. I'm going to change this graphic. Oh, there I am. Uh, and it's not going to – I was thinking, what do I call this if I'm just doing a verse a day? Uh, and maybe it won't be it every day. But it's n- – not all of you watching, okay? Not all of you watching are Christians, and I, I want this all to be relevant to the subject of this channel, Sovereign Artsakh. So Artsakh is an Armenian nation, uh, and Armenia, I am not Armenian, but I, I am here because I believe Armenia and Armenians are special in God's eyes, all right? Now, that sounds weird, but as a Christian, we believe that the Jewish nation is special in God's eyes because that's who God picked. Abraham, like you're going to be the father of a great nation and the Savior, the Messiah for all mankind will come through you and all nations will be blessed through you. And so Israel was like the first, like they were picked. You had to pick somebody. If if God is going to come in the flesh in human form, there's a lineage that had to be one person that the promise was given to and ultimately his lineage became a great nation. Now, the reason Armenia, uh, I would I would liken to that is that Armenia is the first Christian nation and every Armenian will, you know, proudly announce we were the first Christian nation. Whether you are a Bible believing Armenian Christian or just an Armenian who calls himself a Christian because Armenians are Christian. And and that's the case. Some of you are watching this. So I don't want to belabor this point, but I want this Bible section to be relevant to you um, I don't want you tuning away, but so I'm changing this from instead of parsing ancient texts, you know, it's the Bible, you know, it's like we're, we're, we're investigating the Bible. I'm going to change it. As, you, as you've seen, this is now called uh, what Solomon's mother believed. Solomon's mother. And so uh, let me start this with the verse of the day. We're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. And it's in the Bible twice. It's in Matthew, it's in uh, Luke chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 6. And so we're going to look at the Matthew chapter 6 version of the Lord's Prayer. And the reason I'm starting with this, uh, as I've, if we, you know, technically we started with Hebrews 12.1, but I'm changing it to what, what Sogol Montalirian's mother believed or taught him. Uh, in Sogolman's memoir, he prays the Lord's Prayer a couple of times, and there's one time where he's he's reflecting on when he was a child. He, he when he gets back to his home and he's he's in the in a room that he was familiar with, and he has a vision or a, a memory, a vivid memory of him kneeling by the bedside and his mother standing in the doorway and, and praying the Lord's Prayer. And then there's another account that's not in the memoir, but it's in it's some extra materials that we we obtained that are his, his writings. It's his prison diary, but there's an additional, there's additional material that came with the prison diary that is him telling of his childhood. Uh, uh, the memoir doesn't go into his childhood other than a couple memories, but this, this extra material is a uh, detail from his childhood. And he talks about when his uncle calls on him to pray over the meal and, you know, the big table, it's multiple families gathered together and he's like seven years old and he was, it had all this pressure on him uh, and his brothers, everyone was older. He was the youngest brother and they would all kind of pick on him and laugh that he would get picked, you know, because everybody would take their turns. And on one particular occasion, he's called on to pray the Lord's Prayer and the pressure and he cracks under pressure. He gets to a line and he, he skips a line and it's like, no, no, he was, he, his mother is disappointed that he didn't, hasn't had it memorized yet by the time he's seven. So I'm saying all of this to say, Solomon grew up in a Christian culture. His mother was a, a believer. She and her father was, a, uh, I believe, a Protestant pastor. So when I talk about the Bible, I just, I want to talk about what they believe. What Sogomon Tellerian grew up, the household he grew up in, what was taught. Because his, his father didn't live at home. His mother was the head of their household. His father lived elsewhere to send money home. And, you know, he was a Christian as well. But Sogomon's mother was the closest person to him. And if you know the Sogomon Tellerian story, I mean, if you know the memoir, it was his mother who called called him to do what he did. The thing that made him famous, it was, it was just following his mother's orders. So... 
Uh, I'm going to spend probably a couple episodes on the Lord's Prayer. So let me just start with a little bit of background. In, in the Luke version, the Luke's account, it starts with the disciples asking Jesus, teach us to pray. That's not in the Matthew account uh, before he tells the Lord's Prayer, or tells them the Lord's Prayer. But the, the disciples were like, all right, you are the Messiah. You're the coming King. You're the one who's telling us all these truths about our own faith, our Jewish faith. You, you seem to know more than anybody else. Teach us to pray. And here, and so I'll just read it. Jesus says, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that's where it ends there's an extra portion. I'll talk about it next time, but I want to keep this video short. This is kind of the explanation short or the explanation video of, of why I'm doing this. Um, when Jesus tells them to pray, now put yourself in his shoes. Uh, his disciples are saying, Lord, teach us how to pray. And a lot of people think of prayer as like putting coins in a, a vending machine and getting something out of it, or even in a slot machine and pulling the lever and, you know, like forcing the hand of God. You know, what is prayer? If God knows everything, why do we need to pray, et cetera? Um, Jesus is God incarnate. That's the, the teaching of scripture. So Jesus is this, omniscient uh, being. <laughs> and he's teaching everyone about what reality is all about. I mean, that's that's all the gospels are. That's what Christianity is, is this Jesus coming and saying, all right, here's what's been happening in history. Uh, here I am, as your holy books have predicted, I would come here I am to fulfill those things. And there are things yet to come. And it, the, the kingdom is here with you. And that's, uh, Jesus said, like when he started his ministry, the kingdom of God is at hand, not in the far off distance. And in the previous video, I said, heaven is not somewhere up in the sky or somewhere out there. Now, heaven is around us at all times. Like, the, and here, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so earth is the, realm of men where sin is still possible, where sin abounds and heaven is the place of perfection. And it's right there, like right parallel with us and encroaching on us. And that's what Jesus said, you know, I tie this the Lord's prayer in with the great commission, which is at the end of Matthew, when he says, go and uh, make disciples of all nations. Jesus is not telling them you've got to pray in order for the kingdom to come, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done. He's not saying, all right, guys, this is what you got to do. You want to know how to pray to make sure God's will is fulfilled. Pray this way. It, he's not saying that. He's saying God's will is coming to pass. It's inevitable. God's will cannot be thwarted. And so in order for you to be prepared get your mind right, not just, you know, follow me and love me, but this is the mindset you should have. You, you know, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. There's no, no greater, there's nothing greater than, than God, by definition. Your kingdom come, your will be done. That's come, that's what's happening. Jesus said when he started his ministry, the kingdom of God is at hand. So, his kingdom has come. It's here and it's unfolding before our eyes. I, I don't even think unfolding is the right way. It's people's eyes are opening to the presence. When you, when the light goes on that metaphor, it means you see the truth like, Oh, the kingdom of God is all around us. Like Christianity started with zero, like, and then Jesus came and then there were 12 and then there were 500. And then on the day of Pentecost, there's thousands that, uh, that convert to Christianity. And today there's 2.4 billion, right? So 
this gradual opening of, of people's eyes to the reality that the kingdom of God is here, that we are in it. Like, and that's, you know, we are citizens of a heavenly kingdom and have, and, and there are these metaphors that, that we get in our minds that like, we think the devil has horns and is red with a tail. It's like those pictures are actually harmful to true theology. You know, heaven has God sitting on a throne in a cloud with a big beard. It's like, those are, that those are all imagery that's actually, that makes it more difficult for people to grasp the truth. Like heaven is all around us. We are part of that kingdom. And there's a threshold coming in the future when the the distinction between heaven and earth will be erased. I know this sounds crazy, but this is the, te- the orthodox teaching of the Bible that uh, one, I'll kind of end it here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Lord's Prayer in the next video tomorrow, but his kingdom is here and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So align yourselves with what's happening. Like the truth is unfolding. It's inevitable. God's will cannot be thwarted. So align yourself. That's what the Lord's Prayer is. Get yourself in the right place because you're going to be surprised and shocked if you're not. All right. Share this video, subscribe, etc. You know what to do.